We're live right now with Dirtwire at the Gem and Jam Festival in Tucson, Arizona. Guys, thank you for joining us. Man. <laughs> yeah, man, we very much appreciate you doing this on show day. And there was a sound check on the main stage earlier, and we cannot wait for your set, uh, festival set. And we also cannot wait to share your music in the session here today with everybody. Man, what do you guys feel like doing first? Thanks for having us. We're going to do an improvisation with featuring the Mountain Dulcimer. Thank you guys. Thank you for that improvisation. Thank you for the, uh, I'm learning the names of new instruments and the way that those instruments sound. I know that that is a Kamala Ningoni. I know that there are a number of other instruments here. I'm not going to try to pronounce those names as I've just learned them moments ago, but uh, can we talk a little bit about your personal uh, instrument collections and what they have meant to you, where you got them in your travels and, uh, and how it influences what you guys choose to write and record? Yeah. Uh, we've tra we've all traveled a lot around the globe, and we've all been collecting our instruments all of our lives. So we uh, were constantly inspired by different music cultures from different continents. And um, yeah, this one's from America, the Appalachian Mountains, the Mountain Dulcimer. This is a Kamala Ningoni from Malian 
Burkina Faso and different parts of West Africa. And uh, yeah, the banjo is a descendant of, of African music too. So This is a guitar joe. This is actually a guitar uh, with a banjo body. Nice. What is the uh, what's the most recent acquisition that you've made? I mean, have you been have you been able to travel less like a lot of people have been able to travel less, or have you continued to, to go this around is, and collect new instruments? This is a week old, actually. I didn't even know what this was until a week ago. We were in a um, Boulder music shop and uh, just discovered it and fell in love with it. It was a major score. Thank you, Boulder Music Shop. I wish I could remember the name. <laughs> Thank you, Boulder. Sweet, man. Well, thank you for, for learning the instrument, right? Brand new thing right in front of us, and uh, it sounds wonderful. And there's a lot of music still coming up, man. What do you guys feel like doing second today? We're going to do a little, another improvisation. We're going to use the mouth harp or the jaw, jaw harp. Yeah. Jaw harp, G harp, mouth harp. Are you in key? G? Yeah. You start. Instruments that I have not heard played in, uh, or not seen played live, certainly not in a trio ever, but. Uh, Maybe with the Who, the Mongolian band. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you know those guys? Oh, yeah. We yeah. record those guys in Austin. Oh, cool. Nice. Nice. Wow. So just playing there. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love them. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. amazing. They're yeah. real we've, we've collaborated with one of their members. He, he's, he's passed on, named Congo Olondar. Yep. Nice. And uh, we have an EP with him. It's called Ondar. It's like two Vin remix collaborations that there were. Oh, nice. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, if there's anybody trying to, to Google that right now, we'll wait until this session's over, but please do after this Google <laughs> the Who H-U, uh, Mongolian yeah. tube and throat singing uh, metal yeah, band. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah, the pretty Who, amazing stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, we, so it, we were talking about, about travel and instrumentation, and um, both of those things go into your work with the one mic. 
project. Um, I want to know more about it and um, and uh, how how your passion led you to work with that project, and also what uh, people who are interested can do in order to to get involved with it. Cool. Yeah, the One Mic project is a it's an organization out of North Carolina with the Leaf Foundation, Leaf International, which does two festivals a year in uh, North Carolina. <clears throat> And it's an initiative to uh, build recording studios in different parts of the world and places that don't have the resources to really have the equipment or the studios built. So there's a grant and foundation that is funding these studios through Leaf International. And um, we were lucky enough to do a collaboration at one of the festivals where they brought a bunch of the students over from uh, Uganda, Haiti, um, Tanzania, uh, and they all came over to um, North Carolina and we worked on a track and recorded it with a bunch of the students. But these uh, studios are being built and uh, one mic is actually uh, collaborating with another project we're doing called Sunrise Studios, which is building a recording studio in Kenya, uh, in Kakuma, in the biggest refugee camp over there. And we're just getting that going right now. <clears throat> so there's a lot of initiatives happening if you're interested. Um, Right now, to get involved, you could probably just email Dirtwire at Gmail and get in contact with us, and then that we can introduce you to the right. It's a lot of things that are forming right now. Um, you can also check out uh, Leaf International and get involved with Leaf.org. Uh, they're they're a great organization. Cool, cool, man. Well, thank you for for your work doing that, and thanks for uh, for telling us about it and how to get involved as well. Um, we, d is that eventually going to involve you guys going to, uh, to Kenya or is it going to be, is it a, a yeah. project that's, that's done via organization remotely? Um, possibly, like there's totally a possibility of doing that once the studio gets going. That's, that's sort of the vision of it. Once the studios are more uh, you know, built and, and running, then like to do trips out there and do some like uh, workshops and, and collaborations. Sweet. Just beginning, yeah. Yeah. Well, good, man. We're maybe, maybe, the more I say it, the more it seems likely that we're, we're trying to take this thing to the Pay Studio on the road, maybe to Havana, and maybe we might do one in Oaxaca oh, wow. as well, which, um, I mean, there there are studios there, and there are the, the resources yeah. for, for those things to be built, but if you guys want to come with us. We should, Havana, yeah, we'd love dang. to. We're talking yeah. about Let's do it. a project right. in Havana on. with one, with uh, Sunrise Studios, so maybe. maybe there could be like a launch or something Done. Let's talk. <laughs> All right. Well, start it. Start it. Not done. Yeah, that was yeah. easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> done. Nice. Man, um, well, thank you very much. I think we're doing an instrumentation change right now, yeah. and you're going to get into a third song. What do you guys want to do third? We're going to do a song called Step Grass, which we wrote. Evan, Evan came up with it. We actually came up with it when we were in Kazakhstan, right, Evan? Yeah, yeah. We were in Kazakhstan playing the Spirit of Astana Festival, and... Uh, we were sitting in the hotel and I came up with this lick and then David started bowing his banjo and we found some parts to work together. So we call it step grass because it's kind of a bluegrass feel but we are on the steps of Central Asia. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. And yeah. we, were, we were listening to quite a bit of your music uh, lately. We are very much looking forward to this. We were listening to, uh, to Electric River on the way uh, when you guys were coming over here and poking around, finding out more about it, realizing that album artwork was um, so, uh, inspired by image of, of Maria Sabina. And we were, just, we were just down in Guatemala doing this, and the little mezcal bar that we were shooting in had images of Maria Sabina everywhere. So I've just recently learned about about who she is, and so I guess the broader question is the way that the um, the cover art, the album art, all the visual art that uh, that accompanies Dirtwire um, enhances and um, accompanies the music, and then the more specific is that that particular one, uh, Maria Sabina in particular. Yeah, we, we named that uh, album Electric River to sort of <coughs> honor our experience. Can you grab a microphone? That one? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Far away. Ooh, is this better? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> cool. So, yeah, we, we named that album Electric River when uh, you, our friend Kerry Thompson did this painting of Maria Sabina. And we wanted to just talk about our relationship to uh, psychedelic mushrooms and psilocybin and honor that relationship, which we've had for a long time um, and, been, and been using and uh, recording our music on it. And that's how a lot of our first uh, album came together and other recordings. And so because of all the decriminalization of psilocybin and the acceptance of its therapeutic uses in the mainstream, we were feeling that it was a great time to just sort of like showcase that again and talk about it um, because it's been, a, you know, a great benefit to, to my life personally and, you know, each of us individually have our own relationship with it. But... Um, it's, yeah, it's been an influence on our music, and uh, we wanted to honor the lineage on where it came from for this, this t moment in time, right, Maria Sabina? I mean, I, mushrooms have been, are, like, been going on forever, and they probably, uh, throughout um, the planet's history, have like, hit civilizations at different times. But we're lucky in the past, I don't know, what, 70 years is where her influence and the her representing the uh, you know southern Mexican tradition of usage of uh, magic mushrooms. So yeah, we just wanted to honor that in, on an album. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, there's so such a wide variety of of usefulness to that particular to that particular substance. It's um, I think it's it's excellent to spread that uh, that message. You know, it's not not. Uh, party thing necessarily it's so there's so many uses and so many therapeutic uses which uh yeah are you guys um, are you able to check out the there's a, a workshop on it there's a doctor who i forget her name but she's teaching uh, a workshop about um uh, the usefulness of it today like this afternoon oh, i think cool. um over at the amethyst tent so yeah uh, it's, it's everywhere i mean and i feel like that's what's exciting about it is everyone's talking about it and there's just so much support for it all over the country right now, you know, with, even in DC, right? They just decriminalized, um, you know, plants yeah. in DC, which is a huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out to yeah. Rain Grant. That's probably yeah. Rain Grant's probably who you're talking about. Oh, right. yeah. She might be speaking over there from the Colorado Mushroom Company. Yep. Yep. That is the case, man. Well, thank you for uh, for spreading the some of the thoughts behind the music, the music itself. I'm having a great time, and um, and we still got uh, there's two yet coming up, right? Do we have? Are we doing another? Do one, we're gonna do one more. One more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys feel like doing last today? You gonna play drums? We were gonna just do like a, a jam on the drum set, and Mark's gonna be playing cigar cigar box, and Evan's playing harmonica. Yeah. I'm going to play the little drum set. This is a cigar box made by Lazy B, John, out in New Jersey. What's up, John? Makes a killer cigar box. Check him out.
Guys, thank you so much for doing this. Have a wonderful festival set later on this evening and uh, travel safely to all the upcoming dates. And uh, do we know, is there information about upcoming releases? Um, do we know it's, what's on the, on the horizon? Public information? Well, we just released an album. About Could you scream ago. it into that? Oh, oh yeah, the, handheld. that handheld mic. Yeah, um, we just released an album called Embers a couple of weeks ago. So check that one out. Um, that's our latest release, but yeah, we've got more singles coming out this year and we'll be at a bunch of other festivals too. So outstanding. All right.